the weather. Welcome back. A former FBI double agent shares his experiences taking on Russian military intelligence in his book, How to Catch a Russian Spy, newly out in softcover. Naveed Jamali also shares his expertise as a regular contributor to MSNBC and NBC News. Naveed, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Dude, what a story. I mean, this is crazy. Okay, so let's talk through this. Your, your folks um, emigrated to the U.S., your mom from France, your dad from Pakistan, That's right? That's right. They meet in graduate school in New York. They get married. They have you, they have a business. What does the business do? The business sells books of all things, <laughs> and which is not a very big, you know, you would think target for the Russians, but in fact, it turned out that it was. It was. So somebody came into the store, and then what happened? So there was a knock on the door. A man walked in with a trench coat and said, I want to buy some books. <laughs> in a trench in coat. In a trench coat. Can't make this stuff up. And my father was like, this is great. We just got a, you know, business. He said, I'm from the Soviet mission to the United Nations, and he gave him a list of books of nondescript, you know, books. And Dad said, okay, I will fill this. Should I ship them? And the man said, no, no, I'll come back in a couple weeks and pick them up and pay cash, and left. And then 10 minutes later, there was another knock on the door, and it was two other men in trench coats who said, <laughs> this is we're, we're with the FBI. The man who just came in here was a Soviet intelligence officer. What did he want? He said, they want to buy some books. So we'll get him his books, and if he comes back, we'll be in touch. And so that started, if you can believe it, an almost 20-year relationship with the Soviets and the Russians and the FBI, my parents and then me. So we're multi-generational. It's just crazy. <laughs> you were like 12. Right? I was, I was yes. Point. I was even younger than that. But yes, that I was. So, so this goes on forever and ever, which is just amazing and interesting. But 9-11 happens, and how did that change you and what you wanted to do? I was in graduate school, kind of aimless and working in, in Boston, and I really felt the need to be you know, do something to serve the country, and I sure. wanted to join the military. And so I came up with this harebrained idea that if I helped the FBI with the Russians, that in fact they would write me a letter of recommendation. Now I sort of kick myself. I wish I'd asked for a little more. <laughs> but this started off as like a summer internship. I had no idea that I was going to be doing something that would last for three years working undercover. So you ended up, was it through your parents' business, or yes. how did you make contact with somebody in order to be a double agent? So the Russians at this point had kept coming to my parents' office, and my parents were retiring, so I was, I was working there. And that's exactly it. One day, one of these Russians walked in, and I introduced myself, and sort of the account, as it were, was passed from mm -hmm. my father to me, and, and we, I, I just and picked up the torch. And you carried on. That's right. So, and uh, some dude named Oleg. That's right. All right. And then somehow, over the course of these years, the story, I want you to get the book, because I don't want to spoil it for you, but it ends up years later at a Hooters, believe it or not. <laughs> That's true. This has so got to be a movie. It, it, so it did sell as a movie. We're hoping that it does actually make it into the theaters. It's really one of those things you read yeah. this and you go, no way. That's right. I mean, All it, the time. And if I can say, spoiler alert, I'm still alive. Yes. I'm fine. So. Well, and here's the thing. So you moved out here for your wife's job That's from right. New York to Seattle. And I keep thinking when I see you on TV, aren't the Russians still mad at you? I mean, are there security? <laughs> what happens after right. you're done being a double agent? It's a fair question. And the short answer is I'm actually safer, I think, by telling the story because there's nothing else to tell. Look, it's been a, it's been a wild ride for me. I've written a book, ended up on MSNBC, uh, briefed Congress about Russia. Right. The worst the Russians have really done to me is actually gone onto Amazon and give me bad reviews. I, I, you know, <laughs> so I, I'm pretty lucky. I, I think that and that's, that's what I tell people when I see the bad reviews. It's the Russians. But, it's the Russians. You know, there, there is a point, you know, Margaret, here that the Russians just don't want any attention to this story. Yeah. So they really, the less sort of things they do to bring attention to it is really where they want to stick and anything to hurt me would, would do would, would do that yeah, exactly so fast forward to not so funny what happened in the 2016 election and you know I poured over the indictment against the Russians sort of looking for what this was all about and how we you know put this together when you read the indictment that came out you know a week or so ago what did you see that I might not see with my layperson's eyes? You know, there's two words that, that really stuck out uh, in the indictment, and it's, they're, they seem sort of not so big, but they really are. And that is, the, when they're talking about the Russians who came to the United States, they mentioned two words, in t to collect intelligence. Right. That, to me, is exactly what I did for the Russians. Collecting intelligence means talking to people who are going to spy for you. So I'm very convinced that the Russians, uh, you know, we don't know who those people were, but I'm very convinced that, look, they continue their tactic, which is to recruit people and use those people to spy on the behalf of Russia. Um, so that is the part that I think they're still very much active. And, you know, at the end of the investigation, if there are, in fact, Americans that did that, I think the American public wants to know who those people are. Right. This seems like a nonpartisan issue or should be, right? I That's mean, right. I don't know that there's anybody, no matter how they voted, that doesn't want to be sure that our elections are fair and free. 
that's our calling card. I mean, what, what are we if we don't have that? That's right. This is a national security question. And, you know, uh, putting questions of collusion aside, it's very clear that the Russians had an intent. Look, from my experience, going back to the 80s, uh, and to, I was active from 2005, 2009, so under a Republican president, under a Democratic president, what we saw very clearly was that the, for the Russians, the Cold War just simply never ended. They still view us as their main adversary, something. and you know they're going to act accordingly. And they continue to look for people who will advance right. that. So this morning, the NSA director, Mike Rogers, was testifying before Congress, and I want to get this right. He said that he needs the president's permission through the defense secretary to meet the Russian interference at its source, and that he has not gotten that permission. He says, we are not where we need to be or want to be. So given that, how confident are you that the 2018 elections will be secure? Well, I, I would say that reading the indictment, Margaret, I did actually feel pretty confident in our capabilities of the intelligence community. I mean, that mm -hmm. was when you're seeing emails going back from these Russians to, you know, to their spouses, and we must really have some pretty good sources and methods that are able to keep tabs mm -hmm. in this. So on one level, I am confident in our intelligence community. Um, what I am concerned about is the Russians see no downside to interfering in our internal domestic things. That's not a partisan issue, but if they don't see a downside, why wouldn't they do it again? It's really as simple as that. It's not, you can focus on one thing and they'll just move here. The idea is, if, there's, uh, if it's all upside to them, why wouldn't they do it again? What do they fear? What would be currency to stop them? I think what I found from the Russians is they fear strength, and you can't negotiate with them from a point of weakness. So if you're negotiating, or you're saying to them, stop, but don't really stop, they're not going to stop. If you, and I think to President Obama's credit, you know, he did warn Putin with a red phone at one point, hey, knock it off. And I think that him throwing out uh, the 35, the 30 plus Russian uh, diplomats right before he left office by saying the, uh, the, our voting systems are going to be on the critical infrastructure, he sends a clear message. So really it's not so much about just hardening, you know, voting machines. It's about making it clear to Russians and others that, hey, don't mess with us. It's not in your best interest. We're going to come after you if you do that. There are consequences. It's our national security. That's right. I can't think of anything more important. That's right. Thank you for your service. Thank and you. for heaven's sakes, go get the book. It's just too good to be true. It was lovely to meet Thank you. you. Thank you. We've linked more on Naveed's work and his intriguing book on New Day's website. You can find out more there. Still ahead, the secret to uncovering hidden treasures at the flea market. We're going to get some great deals after this. <laughs> 300 Washington workers are injured on the job each day and may be entitled to lost wages.